About five years ago, I received my first camera. It was <laughs> for me and only me to do with as I pleased and to capture moments that I was gonna be able to have for the rest of my life and share with the people that I love. I was excited because I thought it would be fun to take pictures, to take it on family trips, take pictures of my nieces and nephews, all the things. What I didn't realize was that this camera, this Nikon F3, was going to change my life. It was going to open a door of creativity that I needed. It was gonna allow me to be artistic and take risks and create things that I could share with people that were genuinely beautiful. It's opened so many doors for me and I just wanna share that with you. There are five things I wish I knew as a beginner photographer. And the first one, probably the most important, is don't be precious about what you're shooting. Don't be worried about whether or not the shot you're getting is going to be iconic. I used to be terrible about this, specifically with my film camera. I would put a roll of film in, take two shots, and it would stay on the shelf for way longer than it should have because I was worried about getting an iconic shot rather than just going out and doing it. I wanted to make photos that were iconic, and in doing so, I missed out on a lot of opportunities, a lot of moments that I could have captured had I not done that. There are a few fundamentals of photography that you should know. This leads us to our next point. Aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. If you just started taking pictures, you may not know what any of these things are, and that's okay. I have end-up videos that will be coming that will give you more details about each of those things. But until then, we're going to touch on these key points to help you establish what you need to know. Aperture essentially acts like the pupil of your eye. It controls the intensity or amount of light that reaches the inside of your camera. Your aperture is measured in something called f-stops, so f1.4. F2, F4, those are all measures of aperture. Let me show you. So you can see here, if you look in the center of the lens, the more the aperture is open, the more light is going to come through. The more it is closed, the less light is going to come into the camera. So when my aperture is stopped all the way down, it's at F22. When it is all the way open, it's at F1.2. The smaller the number, the larger the opening. The larger the number, the smaller the opening. Think of it like being in the dark. When you're in the dark, your pupil dilates to let more light in. And when you're outside and it's sunny, it constricts to let less light in to also help keep from damaging your eyes. But that's besides the point. Okay, I'm back in my photo studio. I'm in the process of setting it up right now, so it's pretty bare, but I've already started using this room for portrait photography. And once it is complete, this will be my primary workspace. There will be a video of that process coming soon, so please keep an eye out for that. Let's talk about shutter speed. Shutter speed is how long light comes through your camera or how long your camera is exposed to light. Shutter speed is measured in fractions, so 1 60th, 1 25th, and so on. The slower your shutter speed is, such as a 30th of a second, an eighth of a second, or slower, the more you're introducing motion and blur into your images. The faster your shutter speed is, something like 1 60th, 1 25th, or higher, the less motion you're introducing to your images. And the reason that it's important for you to know this is so that you make sure you have the proper shutter speed for whatever it is you're trying to shoot. Whether it's someone running at one one thousandth of a second or it's really blurred water at one eighth of a second. Your images come out how you intended them to. The next fundamental of photography that you need to know is ISO. ISO is your camera's sensitivity to light. With film cameras, it is the sensitivity of light to the film in your camera. And with digital cameras, it is the sensitivity of light to the inside of the camera or the sensor. And low ISO means less sensitivity to light, like an ISO 50, for example. A high ISO would be higher sensitivity or more sensitivity to light, such as a 
ISO 3200. The last thing we need to talk about is exposure. Together, shutter speed and aperture determine the exposure of the image you're trying to capture. Exposure is the overall darkness or brightness of an image. And in order to get the proper exposure, your shutter speed and your aperture have to work together. You can test this out by setting your camera to shutter priority or aperture priority. There should be a little dial on the top of your camera that has a bunch of letters, A, S, M, P, and when you set it to A, that's aperture priority, or S is shutter priority. When the camera is set to shutter priority, the only thing you have to worry about is the shutter speed. You only change the shutter speed and the camera changes the aperture for you. Vice versa with aperture priority. The only thing that you have to change is the aperture. It's going to automatically adjust the shutter speed. In doing this, you'll get more comfortable with aperture in aperture priority, and you'll get more comfortable with shutter in shutter priority, and then you'll be in a place where you can kind of tackle both at the same time. Setting your camera to shutter priority or aperture priority might be a good place for you to start if your images are not coming out the way that you want. Pick one and once you get comfortable with that you can try the other. When I first started all of this information felt like way more than my brain could handle but with practice it did get easier. The last thing that I will say is doing things that make you uncomfortable will help you grow and learn as a photographer. You want to do things that make you uncomfortable and that you've not done before. Things that are going to help you be a better photographer. Things like asking strangers to take their photos or asking your friends to come over and model for you. It's going to make you a better photographer because it's going to push you to grow and learn in areas that you wouldn't necessarily try on your own. I hope this video helped. If you have ideas about what you'd like to see next, please leave a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe so you can see all of the new videos coming your way. Until next time, I'm Tilly Scholl and thanks for watching.